Okay, so welcome everyone to the uh, progressive web app for Angular form. So who here uses Angular form? Okay, no hands. One hand. Angular two. Angular JS. Okay, that is a few hands, right? That's great. Okay, so uh, that's that's how it looks like. But don't worry, I want all of you to give yourself a pat on your own back because you have made a right decision, the best decision in your entire life, to come into this room and listen to my talk. Right? So give yourself a pat on the back. Right? Congratulate yourself. Okay, so my name is Quiren and I uh, my Twitter is Quiren down there and of course I have this tagline that I often use it's called uh, proprietary software worth nightmare and when people think of that hear of that word they will think of uh, Stallman and they will even think of VLC and protesters helping them in install VLC right okay so what do I really do as a so called this tagline out here proprietary software worth nightmare right well, I, I'm one of the Fedora ambassadors here in the APEC region and I help to organize events such as Document Freedom Day and I'm also, I was also one of the uh, open, <coughs> open organization ambassadors here in Singapore so uh, I write articles about open management and how like social architecture is actually more important than the technical architecture and of course I do some side stuff in my free time as well, like and PPPN, like I started in this school called Niam Poly, and in campus within school campus themselves, uh, people can't really play games at all because there's a firewall there. So I started up some soft at a VPN and then help people be able to play games within the school. Yay! Yay. And of course they are able to SSH within the school. <coughs> so just tiny projects. And to the day which I am here today, yeah, and like my journey so far has been inspired by many role models in the tech community itself. And my recent tech uh, models, role models are like people like Phil, George, and Leonard. Phil is one of the people working in the UK. He works at Trainline. We met last year in Fox Asia. Fantastic guy. He does a lot of open source and he's really passionate about it as well. And George, of course, he's a Java champion, and probably people already know who is George. And Leonard is one of my friends that I made in San Francisco. He taught me a lot about how it is like to live in SF and how his life was like in Zendes itself. So enough of talking about me, myself, and I. Let's get on to the content itself. So I'll first go through like what is the current web world now and size, speed, reality, and how do you do progressive web app? And of course, demo. That's the one of the most important thing. You just need to, even if you forget about everything else, just need to pay attention to demo and of course, ask tons of questions. Feel free to ask like whenever you want, right? Like if you have any questions that suddenly pop in your mind, just raise your hand and shout your question. And I'll try my best to answer it, of course. So, in every talk you've been to, people would say, oh, the top companies has no XYZ, Uber has no whatever, Airbnb has no whatever. So you already probably have listened to this a lot of times, right? And it's kind of boring, right? I'll give you something else that would make it more interesting. Top numbers in the world, right? Number one, number of Node.js dependencies. Number two, Number of articles saying Java is dead. And the third one, of course, number of statistics made up on the spot. Okay, uh, love? Okay. <laughs> okay, maybe it's not that funny, but it was funny to me when I thought of this. Okay, so the, dem the demonstration app that I'm going to show you has 782 dependencies. Right, no joke at all. And guess what's the size? Anyone has a guess on what's the size of, the, of it after it's compiled? 1 MB, raise up your hand. 2 MB, raise up your hand. 5 MB, any guesses? 10 MB? Okay, no, nobody knows what, what the size is. And, okay, so I'll tell you the size 
it's one megabyte. The app that I created so far is one megabyte in size after compilation, which might seem very little, but to me, it's quite big, right? It's a gigantic, right? It's not just small, it's not big, but it's huge. And we've got a problem, Houston. What do you think is the average web page size nowadays? Any takers for 510B? Okay, so, okay, never mind. We'll seem to be a bit more quiet here. No worries. The average size, web page size nowadays is 2.9 megabytes, which is close to 3 megabytes. Right, and it's most of the sites I've visited so far is 10 megabytes. And you might be wondering why am I even talking about this stuff right now? It's really important that I mention about sizes and everything and speed and performance because it's related to PW later on. So most of the sites are 10 megabytes. What do they even contain? Well, analytics. Brick Brother likes to watch at you, Google Analytics and all, all sorts of analytics, right? They just don't they don't even have just one form of analytics, they would have 10, or I don't know, like what, new relic and lots of lots of analytics just to analyze and profile the data on you, which is kind of invasive and pointless because it's just taking up so much size. And people would like to load the entire bootstrap library, right? They would probably just use two or three functions of the bootstrap library and say, hey, no, we're going to use the entire bootstrap library because it's easier that way. And of course, when you have the entire bootstrap library, you have the entire jQuery library. It's a monster, right? It's, it's humongous, right? Okay, then people would think, hey, what's wrong with that, right? It's easy to use jQuery, it's easy to use all these humongous monsters that's gonna blow up everyone and everything. Well, I'll tell you what's wrong with that. It's slow. Okay, you might be living in a first world country where, you know, internet is relatively fast, but even if you're serving on 4G, 4G networks, it's, it's still going to take some time, right? And, you know, people will say, oh, why not just throw in a CDN and then like, Akamai and Cloudflare and, or AWS and then it's going to be flux, right? But no, you still got another problem here. It's inaccessible. What do, I, what do I mean by inaccessible? When it's inaccessible, I mean like developing countries, they are not able to access it well. It's huge. It's expensive to visit the website, right? And therefore, it's inaccessible. And when the web was founded, it's supposed to be open and accessible. And when you make it inaccessible with your huge sound file size and everything, well, because you're violating what the original founders of the web wanted to. Right. So what's the solution to all these problems so far we've faced? Let's use vanilla JS. Yay, let's go back to the days of pure JavaScript, ECMAScript 2017 standards and write it purely in just vanilla. Right? It sounds like a great idea, right? It's, it's fantastic, right? For small projects. Of course, that's fine. But when you work in a big company or you're working in a team, you need some form of structure to guide your code. Right? You can't just write everything in, in just vanilla JS. It, it has less structure and right? it's gonna be a code mess sooner or later. Right? Of course, then the more reasonable answer would then be to have a single page app, ahead of time compilation, minification, and caching, of course. So how do we even achieve all this? Single page apps, we could use React, we could use Angular, we could use Vue, we could use tons of single page app stuff that frameworks out there. Well, when, we, when I talk about ahead of time, compilation is specific to Angular 2, Angular 4, yeah, this kind of stuff. And of course, minifying and caching would be very related to the top. And next thing I want to talk about is reliability, right? So, what does this term reliability even mean? It means that when you browse something, it should be there, right? Like, let's say, even if the server goes down, something should still show up somehow. Or the service should be reliable whenever you want to assess it, right? 
before I go on further about reliability, let's play a little game. Right? Let's play this game. I'll show you a picture and then uh, this the first one is a really quick demonstration of what is the answer. So who will win in this scenario? 200 million parabase or one zookeeper? The left or the right? Any? Raise up your hand if you think it's the left. Raise up your hand if you think it's the right. Okay, <laughs> never mind. Okay, the answer is on the right. Zookeeper. The zookeeper will win, right? So this this was related to the RMA thing. You know, does anyone know it before? Okay, awkward silence again. <laughs> okay, so basically RMA was was shot by this zookeeper at the time. Okay, so let's move on to the next picture. Right. Who would win? Millions of highly available servers distributed across several regions that guarantees multiple lines of uptimes and owned by the largest cloud company ever versus some ancient playbook scripts. Of course, this would mean this is we are all talking about reliability and things can happen, right? Things happen out of our control, right? Internet service provider can go down completely, some Meteor can drop down on the earth, but that doesn't matter, right? Your site still needs to live on. And how do we ensure such reliability? Other than, of course, on the server side, all this highly available dis distribution and all that, we've got to do on the front end as well, right? So, progressive web app ensures reliability on the front end side. And it does this through service workers, does this through manifest and everything else. So with PWA, you're able to handle network partition. Right? So of course that's the you everyone would have heard of the CAP term. So you have C A P, right? Consistency, availability, and of course partitioning, right? So the last one which is something that uh, all software will face, which is partitioning, network partitioning. Right. So PWA is made so that the client sites are able to handle network partition. How do we do PWA, right? We have talked about the benefits, such great profound knowledge that can't be found elsewhere in other talks so far. Right? So how do we do it? Tell me the secret. Right? So hold your horses. I'm gonna tell you the secret. The first one is of course manifest.json. Right? So we need to modify we need to create this file called manifest.json and then we need to specify certain parameters within it, provide certain assets and everything else. Second thing is to have Angular Service Worker. Right, so in Angular 2 and Angular 4, we have this thing called the Angular Service Worker, which allows you to do, which installs the entire service worker there, and you can do whatever service workers can do. And Thirdly, I want everyone to remember this very, very important concept. You can forget about everything else. Right? This was said by Peter Hingens. He's the founder of Zero MQ and he was the original founder uh, for AMPQ standards. So JP Morgan uses AMPQ and all that, so you know he's some pretty big guy out there somewhere. But of course he has already passed away. And he said threats must never block. Sharing so-called mutual data between threads is a really, really bad idea. Right? We discovered this only in 2016. But he's really said this in like probably 10 years ago when he was really doing, doing technology, when he says, you know, oh, this is awful, why are you doing this? Right? Mutable data crap. Right. So uh, you should definitely read this book called The Confessions of the Necromancer. It's available online on this book. Go and look up on it. Okay, so let me talk about the app a little bit more. So what is this demonstration of the app I, I'm going to talk about? So we have the user interface, which is of course written in Angular, right? And within the Angular application itself, we have services. So Angular 2 has a Okay, so since most of you are doing Angular JS, you would have migrated from the concept of uh, 
there shouldn't be. I don't think there's any components. So Angular 2 introduces components. Keep in mind that Angular JS and Angular 2, although it's a complete UI, there are many core concepts that were taken from Angular 1 and there's just improved on. So and in theory, Angular 1 and Angular 2 isn't too much of a big difference in theory. Right. So we have services, we can write services in Angular 2. And we write service workers as well. So in the user interface, we have service workers. The API service talks to, the, to my backend uh, JSON API. And after that, it uh, transfers, the API transfers the data to a calculator. And after that, the calculator does some calculation and pass the data to web pusher. The web pusher pushes the data to the service worker. So you might not know this, but with service worker, you can do web push notifications. How cool is that? Cool, right? So literally, you install it, you install a web app on your Android mobile. Okay. Safari is not supported, so iOS is not it's not able to do web pushes at all and stuff like that. So if you have Android phone, you install the PWA app on your phone. So that means you visit that website. If it's a PWA website, you can install it. it that means it becomes a small icon down there. And then after that, uh, I'll show you some pictures of how it will look like. Okay. And and when you it's installed on your phone. The owner of the site, he can push notifications down to your phone, right? It's literally like normal push notifications on a normal app. That's how cool it is with service workers, right? So, uh, so what my app is going to be about, it's, it's roughly related to this image down here. US and China, right? They hate each other for life, right? They, they say they're gonna sanction each other, they're gonna kill each other and everything, right? But behind the scenes, we know that US just wants fidget spinners, right? And then where do they get these fidget spinners from? They buy it from China, and then China say, excellent. Okay, that's very stereotypical using Chinese voice. I'm a Chinese, by the way, so yeah. Okay, so now to the demo itself. It's the cool stuff, right? So, uh, I'll show you the really, really cool stuff. Okay, so now I've got four applications down here. I've got Angular application down here. I've got the my backend service here. I've got my uh, calculator here. It's a calculator. Okay. Oh, but it looks like Let me bring this up a bit. Uh, okay. So I've got my calculator down here. So it's a calculator, and I've got a I've got a web to show down here. So the communication between the backend and uh, between the Node.js backend and and the calculator, and also the this web pusher here is done using zero and queue, right? We we push we push the message from one area to another and then down to the other, then after that. Yeah, so this is kind of like uh, having diff different services and we want it to be reliable, so we use zero MQ or any other messaging queue you want. But uh, I've read, I've looked at Reddit MQ, I've looked at zero MQ, I've looked at other messaging queues. Um, so far, none of it beats zero MQ. Like Reddit MQ is slower and Reddit MQ doesn't have push pull. So this, this style of messaging queue, you might not have seen it before, it's basically a push and a pull. Uh, kind of messaging queue, right? So it's it's kind of different from Rabbit and all of that. Okay, so let me bring up my application down here. So I'm gonna run MTM, run build production, and I'm gonna uh, build uh, <coughs> run the HTTP server on the build area, right? So it run the build and everything. Okay, so how it's gonna even look like? I'll bring up my Chromium here, Chromium browser. Yeah, it's, it's not Chrome, so it's open source, yay. Okay, so when I bring it up here, I'm able to see like, there's a webcam here. So by default, uh, webcams are not enabled. So I'm gonna disable everything. How am I gonna do that? I'm gonna not allow it anymore. I'm gonna disable it. 
So you have to ask for permission. And I'm gonna kill the service worker. I will need to kill the service worker here. Okay, so unregistered service worker refresh page. So when I refresh page, uh, there's a webcam here. Okay, so how it works is this is a game, right? So uh, it calculates scores based on how long you can spin a fidget spinner, right? So hey, it's so creative, right? Fidget spinner is so in trend. So you spin the fidget spinner, and then after that, oh, you gain scores. Right. Then after that, the scores is uploaded to the this, the the Node.js server, and then after that, the Node.js server then uh, push the score down to the calculator. So the calculator will do some modification of the score, and then like do whatever. Okay, this this wouldn't be necessary in a real life scenario, but I'm just doing it for the sake of it. And you could put it in other similar context in your business use case, right? Thereafter, once the score has been calculated, it's passed on to the web pusher. The web pusher then notifies me of my new score. So this is built to be uh, to be resilient against network partitions completely. So I'm going to show you multiple ways which network partition might occur. Right. So okay, I'm going to allow allow this. NSA to look at me. No worries, it's Linux, so no NSA, right? I hope. Okay, so there's a start game down here. Okay, start game, stop game. Uh, retrieve, you don't need to worry about what's retrieved, and scrub side. So, scrub side is to subscribe to push notifications. Okay, so I, I like to say it in a really weird way scrub side, haha. Okay, so uh, I could start the game, I could stop the game. Okay, so before I do anything, I will need to subscribe to the push notifications first. Right, so later on, I'll be, be informed of it, right? So right now, I didn't bring up my, I didn't bring up my Node.js server at all. So what would happen? Right, so down here, when I press subscribe, uh, it would then tell me like, you know, it, it failed and everything. Right, so let me bring up my Node.js server first. Okay, so it runs types. So everything is in TypeScript. Hooray, Microsoft TypeScript. Right, so it created the routes and everything. Okay, don't worry, the source code is all on GitHub. I'll give you guys all the link later on. So now I'm gonna subscribe. So now it's gonna ask for me to allow to show the applications. So this will happen on a mobile scenario as well when you ask the user to, to subscribe to an event. This is just that when I, I bind it to a button click event. So even on the page code itself, you can fire this. Right? No worries at all. So you fire this and then you on a mobile on a mobile device, on a Chrome or whatever browser you use on your phone, it will then ask for permission like that. So I, I say allow. Right. So it then passes certain details back to my Node.js server. So my Node.js server receives certain information about who I am. Uh, by the way, I'm not using any GCM. I'm using uh, or Firebase. I'm not using Firebase. I'm not using GCM or whatever that is. I'm using what we call v VAPID, right? So it's a voluntary uh, identification method of the browser and the user itself. So now I've voluntarily uh, identified myself. So the, the server will know who I am and how do I push the information to me. Okay, so now I can start playing the game. Who wants to play the game with me? Uh, uh, anyone wants to come stage? Play, play with me? Yes. Okay, yay, okay, great. We've got a very brave participant down here. So what's your name? Uh, Luke. Uh, Luke. Luke? Yes. Okay, so your hold is just, you know, let's stand in the webcam. Uh, we can stand, stand your stand, stand closer. So, you're in this webcam right here. So when I press start game, you spin, uh, you spin, you start spinning the fidget spinner like this very quickly, okay. right? Okay, ready? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So okay. So this is how we play the game, right? It's so fun, <laughs> right? It's, it's <laughs> okay. We can stop now. We will stop the game. So 
down here you might notice something here. So uh, we are yeah, thanks. Thank you. So we are actually detecting for motion down here. So it's a very cheap way. I didn't implement any ML libraries to detect for fusion screener. So you could literally wave and discount as score. Okay, so when I stop the game, it uploads the score. Right? So uh, the score down here says 149, but it can't push to the score calculator here because the score calculator isn't up. But will the score be lost? Okay, so once I bring it up, once I bring it up like this, I will immediately receive the work. Right? I will immediately receive the work. Because this is how messaging queues work, right? They are reliable. Right? Even when one service is down, the other it will still wait down there, wait for the queue and everything. You can of course distribute down the queue, down the readiness database or whatever you want. And of course down here we have the web user that you know isn't up either. So we just bring it up and see. I've got my new score down here, 298. Yay! Okay, that's fantastic, right? Does, does this look amazing that you can push a notification down to a browser? Is it fantastic? Yeah. Okay, amazing, right? Amazing! Fantastic! Right? So, I'll show you even more fantastic things on this. So, you know, this is... Okay, so this user media uh, get and everything, it's available on Android phones as well. So how do you know whether your phone can support uh, certain features you go to this website called what web can do dot today. So uh, on my Firefox, I would be able to do local notification and push mesh push messages, right? Which is what I just did. And camera, I need to be able to assess real uh, audio and video capture and of course recording media, right? So these are the main things that you need to be able to assess to to do this stuff here. Right, so let's bring down the Node.js uh, Yeah, let's bring down the Node.js server, right? And see what would happen Right, so I'm going to kill the Node.js server Okay, before I do that, let's try a Let's try to kill the network here So I'm going to uh, network I'm going to set it to offline mode So right now I've got no internet, right? So when I refresh and everything, everything will still be there, right? Presumably. Okay, so let's refresh and see what happens. Okay, you see, the web page still loads because service workers, right? So this is very basic caching and everything, not as impressive as the push notification. So let me show you something else. Now, so let's start the game first. Okay, so let's start the game. Okay, so now I'm, I'm playing it alone, very lonely, very sad, right? Okay, so now I try to stop the game, and then it'll push the, they try to push the score down to uh, the server, but of course you can see down here that it fails, right? So what I did here, I did a really simple uh, retry. A very simple retry, keep trying, retrying, retrying until it succeeds. Okay, I'm gonna show you the code. Uh, one, one more demonstration and then I'm gonna show you the code and explain it quickly. Right, so right now I'm gonna bring the demo back up uh, offline. So this is what you should be aiming for, right? When things go down, user could loses connection. Etc. Etc. Shit happens. Dinosaurs dies, and you get eaten alive by some people. You should still be able. To, the user should always still be able to retain their scores and everything, right? So now when the network goes up, my uh, my server receives it. Uh, here it receives the word, and then it sends me a notification. It didn't send me a notification just now. But See it. Okay, so that's pretty much about it for uh, 
for this part. So now I'm gonna do something more fun, right? So uh, I'm gonna bring down the node server, and the same thing will happen as well, right? So just bring down the node server, and of course uh, start game, and then uh, let's say stop the game. So it will also keep retrying, retrying, retrying until the server comes back up, right? Okay, so when the server comes back up, everything will be fine. The class will go through and everything. Right, so no worries about that part. Okay, so enough of the demonstration that looks amazing, right? The demonstration looks amazing, right? The best app we've seen so far? Probably. Probably, right? You see, it has motion detection. So cool, right? Motion detection. So this is using blend, color blending and stuff like that. Pretty cool stuff. Very easy way to detect the motion, and then you can do a really cool, really quick math of ABS. And look out. There's a list of things that I looked at. Okay. So now I'm gonna go close my browser down here. I'm gonna kill my app. I'm gonna kill all my app. Kill this. Kill this. And of course, okay, this. Nothing. Okay. So let's take a look at. Uh, but before going to ask, ask question. Uh, yeah, sure. At the beginning of the demo, you showed that using it to accept all these push notification things. Is, yes. is this a required for for this uh, service worker to work? No. So okay. So the service worker like caching and all that basic functions like caching. It will work without accepting the push notification. So a user is totally not aware that they are working on an offline application in this case. And yeah, so the, even if the user doesn't accept, like doesn't allow me to push notification, they will still be able to use the app offline. Which, which is, they, sometimes they don't feel like they are disconnected, is it? So yeah, they, yeah, so they, like, like, like what I say, network can go down, services can go down, servers can go down, everything can go down, but the user's uh, experience is still there. They can still do stuff, and of course, on the even higher level, you might want to use IndexedDB or whatever real-time uh, client-side database even, and then store certain session data, like let's say they make a purchase, they, they want to add something to their shopping cart, and then later on they can come back and then when they have internet or something they can buy the stuff. What if they close their browser? When the session is still, uh, the let's say they use a storage. So like a, we use it. Let's say we use a client-sided storage like IndexedDB or certain data client-side database. The data will still be there. But if they clear cache, then it's fine. Uh, yes. If they uh, if they clear the cache completely, it's gone. Right. So, so IndexedDB is also in terms of caching. Yes. So like it's, it's think of it like something like local storage. You know the local storage stuff you can do. So uh, it stores data on the basically just on the client side. Does it work the same for mobile as well as desktop? Yes. Yes. They will. Okay. So you have to look at uh, if it's supported on the mobile. So if you have to visit again the website, what can I, what web can do dot today? Then you will be able to find out whether your phone is supported. Uh, is able to store local storage data. Yeah. This is storage here. So down here we have offline storage, which is one of them. Right? So if your phone doesn't support it, then of course there's nothing much. Even if you implement the data on the application, there's nothing much the user can do. They will not have the offline storage. Yeah. So uh, what was it? Okay, so I'm gonna show Okay. Okay. Does anyone know how to zoom in on the web storm? No. Got the shortcut. Okay. Uh, can everyone see it, or is it too small? Is it small, or is everybody able to see it? Okay, I can't find a way to... Okay, 
So, uh, right here we are using a lot of reactive uh, elements, observables especially. So, I know a lot of people have talked about observables and everything, and uh, right. So, a lot of speakers have really talked about it. Okay, so before I dive into observables, let's talk about the things you need to do. Right, so here in the Angular app, you need to turn on service broker, set it true, and of course, install the Angular service broker. In the manifest itself, you need to create something like this a name, a short name, theme color, a background color, icons as well. This is very important, right? So, you need this icon. So, how would it look like when you install it? Right, so a so let's take a look at this. Okay, oh, we think we have to load. What is this conference to Wi-Fi? Anyway, so uh, we've also got to create this file called the NTSW manifest, and we, for push notification to work, you need to show notification to true and background only false. So you should be able to, so when you set background only to false, uh, when the application is in the foreground and not only just in the background, the user will receive the notification. Correct. Sure.
talked about, right? Sharing mutable data is bad, right? So we have increment, decrement, reset score, and stuff like that. And then based on that, we are even able, since it's observable, whenever the score changes, we are able to list, we are able to subscribe to that event. So let's say the score increased by one, two, three, then we can console the log the new the score that change. Right? So it's very reactive, it's, it's near real time and stuff like that. Really cool stuff. So let me show you like how, how it looks like. So I used to have an Android phone. I've got two, both of them spoiled. Right? So now I'm with an iPhone and, I, and iPhones don't have a proper iOS browser. So down here we have the app. So this is installed through adding it to the menu. Right? So you can literally install it very easy. Okay, so uh, if you have an Android phone right now, you can visit M uh, mpdpn.com and then you can see that. Um, I can also show a really quick uh, how it looks like down here. So when I visit this site, okay, let me bring that up a bit. Anyway, let me continue from the data mutation part. So it's really cool stuff we do here. Reducing, uh, we, we reduce the amount, the amount of even, uh, mutable data and everything, subscribe and everything. Right? So this is really a reactive front end, right? if you want to talk about reactiveness. Right? And it's, it guarantees a very fast response, right? which means it's the speed Right. Although it's one megabyte, so it's a one megabyte app, but here's the thing, service worker will cache that data. Right. So if you load, if you refresh the page, the client refreshes the page, they're not going to retrieve that one gigantic megabyte. Right. Which is one good thing about JavaScript. Right. There's always a love and hate relationship with JavaScript, but this service worker thing helps to solve a lot of problems. And it just simply means you don't need to re-download that huge chunk of data anymore. Okay, so let me close this main stuff. When I refresh this page, you will see that this this thing here. Add this site to your shelf to use it anytime. So it's similar on the Android phone itself. So when I press add, you see down there there's a widget challenge, and then I add, and then Do you see here? This cat down here? So this would look like, this is how it would look like on your mobile as well. So I'm going to press it, it opens up like that. Amazing, right? Boom! And just think about it again. You can push the notification down. So when I press subscribe, which I am already, oh wait, I need to bring up the server again. And along, bring up the server again. Bring up the server again. Press subscribe. Okay. Browser resist it. I close this. And then right, so <coughs> down here. Wait a minute. It's really in my shelf. What happens? That's weird. Okay, it's here again. Oh, I think I changed the blue flag which makes it like that. So don't worry about that. It's, I changed some blue flag and then so when I press stop game and then I stop game and then I close the browser. It should push the notification to me. Okay. Didn't manage to receive it. Ah, okay, so you're supposed to like you're supposed to receive it even though it's you have closed the browser and everything, just like it would be on your phone. So that's it for my demonstration and everything. All right. So it's on GitHub. Uh, you can go to my profile, check out giantcrab slash 
slash fidget challenge UI. That's or you can just visit, visit my username and it's the first two re repository. <laughs> right? Okay. Are there any questions? Any questions? About you can ask me anything like, even afterwards. Anything about Angular 2, Angular 4, service workers, if you're shy. But it's best that you ask right now because other people will, will, will might have the same question. They don't dare to ask. So if you ask it, you're doing a favor for everyone else. Right? So any questions? Okay, yeah, what's yeah. In this in this entire uh, demonstration. Sorry, could you okay in the entire demonstration, for example you have given. Uh-huh. Uh, where did we talk about progressive web application I and mean, how does what does it mean? What okay. do you mean by progressive web application? So and how does it relate to it? That, that was basically the I think reliability and uh, speed. Right? So progressive very progressive a progressive web app that means would it focuses a lot on reliability and focuses a lot on client control, right? When you have service workers, which is mainly, which PWA mostly focuses on service workers itself. When you have service workers, you're able to control what the clients do and cache and everything. You're able to push notifications down to them. So that's, that's really what PWA means. It's reliability. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yeah. Because it's still locked in on the client side, is it secure? Sorry? Is it secure because it's still cache and it's not encrypted data on the client side? Yeah, so uh, obviously you shouldn't be storing sensitive data. Okay, so don't store any... Uh, okay, so here's the thing. You cache the, you cache the website and everything. Uh, you cache static resources. Right, so you don't cache dynamic resources like, let's say, a login website. You probably wouldn't be storing your password on the local storage. Even if you were to store some kind of authentication, you would store it in an encrypted manner. Right, you would want to really encrypt the uh, JSON token and everything, but that that is uh, part of data storage which is not really related to service workers as a whole. Because service workers, they can cache, they can receive notifications and everything. So, okay, so for push notification part, it's coming from a secure manner, right? Because it's HTTPS, we rely on things like HTTPS to, uh, to ensure secure connections between when we do push notifications. Does that answer your question? Uh, yeah, the communication is okay because it accesses the index DB. Yeah. So can other yeah. application also access the index DB? Okay, so uh, if I remember correctly, it's kind of sandbox. So like when you visit another site, the local storage is completely different. It's on the, based on the site, site, site on site basis. The original domain. Yes, yes. So. Uh, and to modify the I think you need to have certain uh, values and stuff like that to allow it to be across several domains of the same. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Oh, yeah. Is there any other questions? Okay. All right. So uh, if you have any question, other questions, you can find me out later. And of course, follow me on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, don't be shy, ask all you want and I'll be glad to answer your questions. Thank you.